Hi everybody, I'm Scott Stewart with UT Extension and I want to talk today a little bit about a little about thrips control in cotton. You know, we're sitting here, it's early June and a lot of times our cotton would be kind of past worrying about thrips, but we've had a pretty tough planting season and we have a lot of cotton that's coming out of the ground first second true leaf stage and that's when it's when it's really most susceptible. So what I'm going to do today is take you through a progression of different levels of thrips control starting with very bad thrips control and ending with some very good quality thrips control and and I'll make a few comments about the impact of that level of control on the economics yield and, and things of that nature. So what I'm standing in now is what we call border cotton and we just plant borders around uh, some of our tests as a gauge for pest pressure and this border has nothing but a fungicide seed treatment and we actually have several different planting dates in here so we're kind of seeing the worst of the worst and we're also seeing that planting date can have a pretty substantial influence. Uh, this little bit of cotton on the right of me was the last planted. It's a little bit smaller but it's also really kind of hit the thrips timing poorly. There's a lot of thrips pressure in here and I pulled a couple of plants out of the ground to demonstrate just how severe this thrips injury is. You, you can see right here the cotyledons are really the only leaves showing. They're discolored and brown. The terminals of which there's supposed to be two or three leaves uh, don't have any leaves on them. They're gnarled up and, and black and there's actually a pretty good possibility this cotton here is, is going to die. It's certainly going to have a substantial maturity delay and negatively impact yield. If you go just a little bit further to the left, this was the previous planting date only by just about four or five days and it's not very pretty either. Uh, but you can certainly see the height difference because it didn't experience that early thrips pressure. You can also see some true leaves on there, but the, the terminal leaves are, are still pretty gnarled up. So this also would be more than likely economic yield loss here. As we move across and, and look at a few more treatments, you'll see some better thrips control, and, and we'll talk about that as we get there. This plot that uh, is given what I call intermediate level of thrips protection and it's probably adequate in terms of maintaining your yield and not causing significant delay but you can definitely see that there is thrips injury. Keep in mind that the previous plant I showed you was the same age. In this plant you can see that there's the cotyledons uh, the first and second and third true leaf and then the fourth leaf is coming on so yeah, you can see what the cotton's supposed to look like when it doesn't have severe thrips injury but you will notice all this crinkling and almost bubbling on the leaves uh, when you get severe injury sometimes they'll they'll curl upward upwards and people call it possum ear but again i would probably say this is acceptable level of control it's not pretty but it's acceptable and uh, unlikely to cause significant yield loss this would be very typical in a lot of our, our cotton, but if you hit thrips pressure wrong and you get even more thrips pressure, uh, they might overcome this level of at planting treatment, and this is a seed treatment. So now we're standing in a treatment that gives very good thrips control, and I, I hate to plug a company, but this is a regulated cotton test that we're in right here, and we're actually evaluating the regulated cotton for thrips control. There's a new technology that's being developed by Bear Crop Science that'll probably be out in 2021 or 2022. It's a BT technology that does a very good job at reducing thrips injury. And so I'm gonna use this as an example of what we'd really like to strive to see as, as we manage our thrips populations. And I'm gonna state first off that this year, this cotton probably struggled more at, at reducing thrips injury than I've seen in the past, but it's still providing very excellent control. If you zero in on this cotton, you notice the cotyledons are burned up a little bit. Again, that's just some herbicide injury. But as you look at these uh, first, second, third, and fourth true leaves, you can see just how pretty those leaves are. There's a little bit of evidence of thrips injury. It's not immune to thrips injury. Uh, of course, being a BT technology, they're going to have to bite it to be affected by it. Uh, but what our experience has shown us is that this technology by itself probably doesn't need any kind of supplemental insecticide application or seed treatment. So this is kind of what we're striving for. We sometimes can get this with at planting insecticides, but it's a lot less predictable. And it's also a lot more dependent on the level of thrips that we're encountering that year. Weather is always a big effect, and that's probably one of the reasons we saw a little bit more injury on this, this bare BT trade. It's called Thrive On, and that's because this cotton really struggled to come up and, and grow, and that slow growth allows insects to nibble a little bit more before the treatment takes effect.
So we've been looking at some cotton, some of which had some really severe in injury, some pretty moderate. I really wanted to talk though about the ideal time to make foliar applications should you think it's necessary. And, and the cotton we were looking at really was past the ideal time. You've seen that much injury and a lot of the damage has already been incurred. So the ideal timing is, is really when that first true leaf is sticking out, any time to when that second true leaf is starting to poke out. And I've got a couple of examples in my hand of that. Uh, like I said, things happen pretty quick. When you have a good warm day, you'll put on a true leaf every three to four days. And so if you're not Johnny on the spot, uh, your application timing can be off and, and you'll lose a lot of benefit of that application. And I'll just start with this plant right here and you can see the, the cotyledons that are there. And behind those cotyledons coming out is the new leaf, and that's the first true leaf on that cotton plant. And, and the second one's already coming out behind it. Uh, this would actually be a really ideal time to make an insecticide application. Really, most of your at planting treatments, uh, at least if it's a seed treatment, is probably already done all that it's going to do. And, and uh, if you're having heavy thrips infestation, earlier is better. One of, the, one of the biggest mistakes is people don't make the application until after they see severe injury, in, in which case you've lost most, if not all, the benefit. It's one of the challenges of this system that you really have to decide, are you going to need thrips control this year or not? And we do have some tools to help us. Uh, we got some historical information. First of all, we kind of know our insecticide seed treatments are going to need help occasionally in, in Tennessee. The other thing is we have this thrips uh, infestation predictor model that predicts in your geography how intense your thrips infestation is going to be. And it's using weather data based on your planning date to kind of determine your risk of thrips injury and that's pretty useful as well so you know I think you use that in combination with your observations of thrips numbers and also uh, really just your experience I can tell you we came out here with our typical sampling technique of shaking plants into a white container uh, just yesterday and we were easily seeing four five six adult black tobacco thrips in those containers plus a lot of immature so it was pretty obvious you know to somebody with a little experience that we we're in the middle of a pretty big uh, thrips migration